Hey, what's up guys? This is Neil Reyes and I want to welcome you to today's episode of Champions Minute. Today, we're going to take a few minutes and discuss the importance of having a good attitude. Get ready. So today, we're going to talk about the importance of having a good attitude. When I talk about a good attitude, that is so important for all areas of life. In fact, if I were talking specifically on success today, I could directly link where you want to be with where you are <laughs> and the bridge to get there all starts with a positive attitude. But today we're going to take it a step forward and we're going to talk about the ABCs of failed Christianity. Again, today we're going to be discussing the ABCs of failed Christianity. You know, our most important thing we can do in this world during our lifetime is to witness for the Lord. But the loudest way you can witness at any time in your life is through your actions. How we act as individuals speaks so loudly that it will open the doors for people to want to stop to hear your words. Actions speak so loud, but so many times as believers, we are still people as well. And unfortunately, there's a stigma that's on believers that is that once you accept Jesus in your life, you become a perfect person or you're supposed to be a perfect person. Obviously, we know that's false and that's not the case. But people in life, whether they're dealing with believers or anyone else, for whatever reason, mankind loves to celebrate the failures of others. If you don't agree with that, all you have to do is turn on any type of tabloid TV show. When you're at the grocery store, look at the magazines as you're about to check out at the checkout aisle. And you'll find magazine and publication after publication talking about the failures or mistakes of this person or how this person has fallen down. It just for whatever reason, mankind likes to celebrate the mistakes of others. Well, believers are no short of a, that example. In other words, that believers, unfortunately, within the church often act like that as well. But the world definitely acts like that towards believers. If we're going to truly witness and minister to people in this life, it's going to have to start with some positive attitudes that lead to positive actions that hopefully open the door to positive words. You know, I remember years ago, my wife and I, when we used to live in Albuquerque, New Mexico, there was this fast food restaurant that we would frequent from time to time, but we would frequent it enough that the staff knew who we were. <laughs> Anyways, that being said, I remember one time I went through the drive-thru because my wife had asked me to pick up some food for us and the kids to eat. And as I was driving through and I was waiting at the drive-thru line, a girl came up to me who was working there and she accepted my money. And when she did, she came back to me later and she said, hey, you go to such and such church, don't you? And I looked at her and said, yeah, I sure do. And she smiled at me and she said, I saw you there. I saw you the other day. And I said, you did? That's fantastic. How did you like it? She goes, I liked it a lot. I said, did we make you feel welcome? She said, yeah, I felt great about it. It was awesome being there. But when I saw you, I recognized you and I instantly I knew why you always look so happy. You have God in your life, don't you? And I said, yeah, I've got God in my life. She goes, yeah, I could tell. And she went ahead and closed the window and she went about to make my order for me. As she did, though, you know, how would that situation had turned out if instead of her looking at me in church and being like, there's that guy who's always happy. Oh, that's why he's got God in his life. God in his life equals happiness. What if she would have turned around and said, there's that guy from the drive-thru. That guy's always a jerk. All he does is complain. He gets mad about the order. He gets grumpy because we take long. That guy's a jerk. And he comes to this church. That's what God in your life does for you. Praise God. That's not what happened. You know, we say that and we joke around. But, you know, I tell my daughter sometimes, Brother Neil keeps it real. 
That is keeping it real. When we talk about the ABCs of Christianity, we're talking specifically about our attitude and specifically not only our attitude towards ourselves, but our attitude towards others and all things around us. So today I want to share with you what I consider to be the ABCs of Christianity. The A stands for always being critical. Are you the type of person who's always critical of others? Maybe you're critical of your boss. You're critical of the decision the company made. You're critical of the benefits they're offering. You're critical of the pay. You're critical of your spouse. You're critical of your kids. Maybe you're driving to lunch with the buddies and you're critical about everyone on the road and how they drive. No one knows how to drive. No one uses their blinkers. You know, it can go on and on and on and on. You know, I'll tell you that no one likes being around a critical person. In fact, I will tell you that in many, many marriages where, t- where oftentimes when couples start having a problem with their communication and either the husband or the wife begin to shut down, it often happens because one of them is being critical towards the other. They may not recognize that it's a spirit of criticism upon them, but it's criticism that has crept its way into their relationship and is operating against them. In fact, I will tell you that if you are one of those people who are quick to be critical, that can rob and steal blessings from you. There could be things that God has placed in your life as a blessing and are meant to be a blessing, but you're constantly critical of them and it leads to you going further and further away from where God really desires you to be. The B stands for blaming. Blaming is when you, as a believer, are not able to take accountability for your own actions and your own responsibilities. You know, one of the things in management that I've learned since the time I was talking to my daughter just earlier today, and I told her that I had been managing since I was 18 years old. And in that time, I told her that I didn't turn around and develop myself into the manager that I am today. I didn't start at that at 18. It took some growth and it took some great people along the way to help groom me in leadership, to help show me. And there were times that they would turn around and they would give me some positive critique and I would have to turn around and take that and grow with it. But if all I ever did throughout my career was blame this person or blame that person or blame that professor, you know, the reason why I didn't get great good grades is because that teacher or that professor blaming them, or because this person didn't explain it clear enough, or, you know, the reason why things didn't go well at work is blaming, you know, the communication at work, or blaming the boss, or blaming the technology, or blaming the responsibilities, blame, 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 you know, blaming doesn't help anything. Blaming is one of the things that can get us in trouble, and Honestly, you know, it tells us in the word that honor to whom honors do. One of the best things you can do in life is not take accountability for things that aren't your responsibility, but to learn to take accountability for the things that are. And if you make a mistake, simply say, I made a mistake and grow from it. If you continue to make the same mistakes over and over, then you're not growing from it. But when you turn around and you recognize your mistakes, mistakes are opportunities to grow from. You know, one of the things that I teach all my employees in any place I've ever worked as once I learned this uh, principle was about lying. And one of the things I tell my employees frequently and my family is that if you can get to the point where you stop lying, you know, as individuals, we should never lie. Even little white lies, as they like to say. No lying. Once you stop lying, there is freedom in it. Because if you never tell a lie, you never have to forget about something you said. And if you never lie, you don't ever have to concern yourself about tripping over something you forgot you said. I'm going to say that again. When you stop lying, you don't have to worry or concern yourself about tripping over something you forgot you said previously. The C is constantly complaining. People who constantly complain are what I call energy suckers. You know, if you know anything about trees and how they grow, when you take a tree and it grows big and it's growing out of the ground, once in a while you'll have what's called a little sucker shoot that tries to shoot out the bottom on the side. And what happens is, as that little stem shoots out the side, 
it'll start to pull the nutrients and the energy out of the main tree so that it can grow. And if you leave it there, it'll weaken the rest of the tree. So you have to come along and prune it. That's why it's called a sucker shoot. And when you are a constant complainer, complaining about things in your life, that will zap the energy out of your happiness. It'll zap the energy out of your joy. It'll zap the energy just out of everyone around you. And when I'm talking about energy, I'm talking about you become a drain on others. You become an emotional drain rather than a beacon of light. Guys, I hope you enjoyed our teaching today. That is what I refer to as the ABCs of failed Christianity. I want to encourage you and remind you that as believers, the definition of Christianity simply means being more Christ-like. And the best way to become like Christ is to know who Christ is. And we do that by spending time in His Word on a daily basis and listening, whether that's listening to teachings, if it's listening to audios, you know, maybe you're listening to YouTube teachings on YouTube on the way into work or at lunch or on the way home. But spending time with Him every day, the more you spend time with Him, the better you'll know who He is. Guys, we want to remind you that Jesus is Lord and He loves you, and so do we. If you haven't gone by our website, we want to remind you to go by our website at neilreyes.com and check out all of our resources. Thank you so much, and have a blessed day.